I'm Slender Man. Adam Sandler's friend is Bigfoot. Skinwalker Ranch. The cattle was hanging from a branch. Mutilated. With his ass, tongue, lung, and kidney taken. Women's going to wake into the situation. She's going to be sitting there waiting. Tell authorities show up with the blankets. High ranking Navy SEALs. Persons maybe impersonating. Man in black will make you nervous shaking. Earthquake, volcano, surge, a space, a hurricane, tornado, go and burp your baby. You think God coming back to get these virgins, babies? Now what the world and came through Colonel Nabel. Adam and Richard E. Burr was taken in the earth surveillance, monitoring humans and worse behavior. There's a water waving. We have to get them permission. They have to work within the rules to be allowed to exist in this dimension. A body of spiritual principles. They have to tell us what they're doing. Therefore, if we allow it to happen, what happened to consent it to it? 1958, let's human zoo. Ubonics united, play wiped out two continents. The con man walks away. The robber goes to jail for taking my goods that was stole from lay. I'ma kill this bitch until his spirit lifts a spirit list out of body experience. Hold on, on. Now I'm back with another video. We got tales from Skinwalker Ranch. Part one. <sighs> you know this is my kind of thing, if you know. I'm into everything. All kind of mythologies, numerology, astrology. I'm an astro logger logging the astros. Akashic records, my chakras aligned. Everything you can think of, I know something about it. Soon to be ascended master. Everybody gotta die, but I ain't everybody. It's on both screens. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. From UFOs, wormholes and cryptids, to cattle mutilations and poltergeists, a remote property in northern Utah has been described as a Disneyland of paranormal and supernatural phenomena. A case that has turned the heads of even some of the... I like that. That's perfect. Disneyland of... Okay, I fuck with it. The most ardent of skeptics. We recount the tales from Skinwalker Ranch. It has been said that Utah, particularly northern Utah and the Uinta Basin, is one of the most active paranormal and supernatural hotspots on the planet. Everything from unidentified lights in the sky, to weird humanoid figures and even Bigfoot have been spotted in the region. It has a long history of high strangeness, accounts which date back to the earliest of human settlements. Three out of every four people in this part of the state have experienced something out of the ordinary, and for many others just passing through, there is a palpable feeling that those dusty roads and bleak landscapes hide something of a dark secret. Much of the strange activity is concentrated in and around the basin, but some believe that within that radius there is an epicenter, from which all these bizarre phenomena seem to manifest. A beautiful 480 acre ranch situated about 100 miles due east of Salt Lake City. As with any other acreage, it traditionally adopts the name of the current owner, but over time, it has come to be known by another. The Utes believe this ranch to be the focal point of a curse placed on them by the Navajo. Tribe members were, and still are, forbidden from setting foot on this land, as they believe it to be in the path of the Skinwalker. For this reason, it became known to the locals as Skinwalker Ranch. Throughout the latter half of the 20th century, Skinwalker Ranch was owned by a family, which has long remained anonymous in this mysterious saga. For reasons unknown, they suddenly and inexplicably vacated the property in 1987, leaving it empty and unattended for more than seven years. That was until 1994, when it was purchased by Terry and Gwen Sherman. Along with their two children, the couple believed that they had found their dream home, the remote property was bordered to the north by a high ridge, which overlooked its sprawling green pastures, wild thickets of woodland, and its flowing creek to the south. The entire estate exuded an almost tranquil beauty that was not lost on the Sherman family. 
Terry was a high-end cattle breeder, and he hoped that the ranch would provide the space, privacy and security he needed to take what was not only his hobby, but his livelihood to the next level. He had bought the ranch for an extreme- It's funny you say that, cattle breeder. You're being used the same way. You're being harvested, your energy, your scarcity, and literally being harvested and being abducted. And you wake up in a crop circle naked with an anal probe in your mouth. That's crazy. As above, so below. What you doing to animals you think is insignificant or inferior to you, you're inferior to them. Let's just say that. Extremely favorable price, far less than what it was worth. And when he signed the paperwork, he accepted the deeds with an excited, disbelieving look in his eyes. What he now held in the palm of his hand was his ambition, his prospects, his dream. He could not have known that the land he had just purchased would almost destroy him, not just financially, but also psychologically. When they had first viewed the property, Terry and Gwen had found the main homestead in a state of disrepair, which of course they had anticipated given the length of time it had stood empty. What they did not expect to find, however, was the sheer amount of deadbolt securing the home, not just on the front and back doors, but on interior doors and all of the windows too. At the front and rear entrances, they also found heavy duty chains attached to huge metal rungs, which were embedded into the walls. It didn't take a genius to work out that these had been used to chain large, powerful guard dogs in place. Although slightly unsettled by these peculiarities, Terry and Gwen dismissed them, believing that the elderly couple who owned the ranch before them had been paranoid and overprotective. They had seemed rather eccentric after all. In the real estate contract, they had inserted a number of unusual clauses. For instance, the Shermans were not permitted to dig on the land without prior approval from the previous owners. These irregularities were overlooked by the family, but somewhere in the back of Terry's mind, he could not help wondering what had spooked them to the point of installing this level of security. In time, of course, he would come to understand that this idyllic, stunning acreage was haunting in more ways than just its serene beauty. And in fact, the weirdness began almost straight away. On the first day of moving in, the Sherman family were unloading a truck in front of their new home when they spotted something on the far side of the pasture to the south. As it closed the distance, they could see that it was a wolf, which was loping gracefully towards them in a series of S-turns. This immediately set Terry on guard, but it wasn't just the presence of the wolf that concerned him. Scaling it against distant fence posts and bushes, he could see that this animal was at least three times the size of an average wolf. But its behavior was oddly disarming. It seemed nonchalant, friendly even, rather than aggressive, slowing down and then stopping about 50 yards away. It sniffed the air and gazed at the family with intelligent, piercing blue eyes before continuing on, casually padding towards them without a care in the world. It seemed entirely tame. It wagged its tail as it approached, and Terry's father, who had been helping unload the truck, bravely reached out to stroke the huge beast. Sherman Sr. stood over six feet tall, and even though he was a big man, its head easily came up to the top of his shoulder. It quickly became clear that despite the wolf's intimidating size and appearance, it meant no harm. The rest of the family relaxed and walked over to greet their strange visitor. Maybe it's somebody's pet, Terry ventured glancing nervously at the corral about 70 feet to his left, and wondering if it had been wise to move some of his herd onto the ranch so soon. Inside of the pen stood four of his breeding cows and as many calves. They were all clearly troubled by the wolf's presence, except for one curious youngster, which was sticking its head out between the metal bars, watching the scene unfold. Almost as soon as Terry had realized the danger, the wolf had bounded across the short distance and now had its huge jaws clamped around the calf's head. The young cow bleated and thrashed wildly as the wolf tried to drag it out of the pen. Terry grabbed an axe handle from the back of his truck and rushed over, beating the huge animal's flanks and kicking at its hind legs, but the wolf paid no attention and refused to let go. Get my magnum! Thing has woofed, ate 
this cattle head. That's crazy. Let me know what y'all think about this. You know how reptilians really do exist, and they're going to rep till the very end. They're going to rep till the end. They can assume human form to where you see them and they mirror a human. Why can't they mirror an animal like the Twilight Zone? And isn't that what it's called when they was turning into wolves? Because that's crazy. Whoever kept note of that, if these literally the notes, the words from them verbatim, and I'd have shot that wolf. I ain't gonna lie. Them, he shouted. His son ran across to the truck, grabbed a 357 from the cabin, and handed it to his father. Terry quickly fired a shot at the wolf's abdomen, which rang out across the empty pasture, but it had no effect. The huge animal did not react in any way. It did not stagger or yelp. It did not even flinch. It simply continued to ravage the poor calf. In his desperation, Terry fired again, Still, the gun had no effect. After a third shot, however, the wolf slowly released its grip and backed off about ten feet. The rancher could not believe his eyes. Very few animals could have survived three shots from a 357 Magnum at point blank range, but this wolf was somehow not even wounded. There okay, I never heard of this story. This is crazy. That power is OP. This animal need to be patched. You mean to tell me you shooting it and it's going through it so either this animal that you see it is intelligent it's matching the frequency of that bullet and therefore it's dematerializing or that's phasing through it or the house you doing it but at the same time with a physical grip you got your your, your your teeth on his cattle how do that even make sense like what the fuck i would honey look at this i would have been recording like <laughs> Hell nah, that is, that's OP. He need to be patched. That's a glitch in the Matrix. You mean to tell me he get to do something to me? No diddy. But I can't do nothing back? Like I started trying to stop it, my hands going through it, sound like? That's, bro. Let's continue. There was no blood anywhere on its coat. Finally, he took a fourth shot, right at the animal's heart, and it retreated another 30 feet. There was something incredibly unnerving about the way it just stood there, with an unconcerned look, contemplating whether to attack the car for a second time. Terry sensed this, and shouted at his son to get his 30 6 rifle from the house, which he did within a matter of seconds. The wolf remained perfectly still as he took aim with the heavier firearm, and he almost felt sorry for the poor beast. A deafening shot echoed across the wilderness as he pulled the trigger, and in that moment, he knew he'd hit his target. But instead of collapsing to the ground in a heap as it should have done, the wolf simply withdrew another two yards and stood looking at an increasingly unsettled Terry. He quickly took another shot, and this time he saw a chunk of flesh detached from the animal, but even this did not put it down. The wolf took- Oh, so the shots was hitting it? What the- I ain't never heard the story before. This is my first time. I know it's some creepy poltergeist hex high like activity going on at Skinwalker Ranch. We got Slender Man, we got fairies, Luciferians, witches, and all kind of things here, but I ain't never heard of this story. This is crazy. It's invincible, it's regeneration, got cellular regeneration technique, shadow jutsu and shit. Like what the fuck? I gotta go to Skinwalker Ranch. I gotta bring the guys with me and we camping with AR fifteens. And, um, shotguns with incendiary rounds on it. Change the settings. Took a last unhurried look at the calf, then turned and trotted back in the direction it came from. Terry was dumbfounded. He knew he could not allow a large predator to remain on his land if he intended to breed cattle. So he called to his teenage son, and the two of them proceeded to go after it. They must have followed the wolf for about half an hour catching glimpses of it as it ran to the south between patches of cottonwoods and other trees. The tracks led them through a copse of Russian olives, the other side of which was the creek, and emerging from the trees, they found themselves on a wide open mud bank. They could clearly see the wolf's paw prints, and immediately began to follow them, but the tracks abruptly stopped about 40 yards from the water's edge. Terry and his son could not believe their eyes. They were standing in a wide open expanse of sodden mud, yet the paw prints ended right in the middle of the bank. 
the wolf would have had to have leapt an impossible 40 or 50 yards in either direction to avoid leaving any more tracks. It had seemingly vanished into thin air. Returning to the homestead, Terry happened to pick up the piece of flesh that had detached from the animal. He noted that, rather than being fresh and covered in blood, it looked and smelled rotten, as though it had been left out in the sun for a few days. In quiet contemplation, he turned his head south and looked out over the pasture towards the horizon, wondering what on earth had just happened. That was the first day. The next few weeks were relatively normal, except for a few strange occurrences which happened around the homestead, all targeted towards Gwen. She didn't report any of these things to her husband at first, as she genuinely thought she was losing her mind. For instance, she would come home from shopping, unpack the groceries and put them away, and then leave the room to attend to something else. Moments later, she would return to the kitchen and find the groceries all back in the bags, as if she had never unpacked them. In other occurrences, she would go to have her customary morning shower. Locking the door behind her, she would place her towel and hairbrush on the side. When she finished, she would step out of the shower only to find her towel and hairbrush missing. They would disappear. A few hours later, she would find them in some random location elsewhere in the house. Things continued like this for some time, and Gwen was getting increasingly worried about her memory. That was until Terry came in one evening. It sounds like Skinwalker Ranch need to be packed. They ain't get no updates. It's like a 2006 deal laptop that can't be rebooted. Similar to a lot of NPCs that walk amongst us, that spawn behind us, they brain instead. It got this program and this installation, and you can't wake them up. It's over with. They dead entities on the shores. It sounds like it's a wormhole or a portal or something over here, or multiple portals. And hell, it's there. You can't see it, though. You see less than 1% of the electromagnetic spectrum, so you need your third Timoy. I unlocked mine two winter sources ago. I can see everything. But this is crazy. It's definitely wormholes over here. That's crazy. It's literally like a Fortnite map with updates over here. Everything is over here. I mean, hell, everything you ever heard of or ever seen, it exists. Ain't nobody just draw no dinosaur or no dragon out of the Chinese zodiac sign. Out of all 11 of the real animals, you mean to tell me the 12th animal? Would that be considered an animal? You mean to tell me the 12th one being a dragon would be fake and the rest of them real? No. One evening, demanding to know who had taken his post digger. He had been using it to repair a fence in the pasture and had turned away for a few moments. When he turned back, it had gone. Gwen explained that she and the children had been in the house all evening and proceeded to help him search for it. However, it was nowhere to be seen. A few weeks later, it was found hanging in a tree on the other side of the ranch, 70 feet off the ground, which was odd considering that this piece of equipment weighed over 70 pounds. The Chevron Collection by David Yearman. By this time, the Shermans were- What if that same reason is how the cattle end up in a tree? That's, that's insane. That's insane. Beginning to suspect that something was not quite right about the property they had bought. About a week before they rediscovered the post digger, a nephew came to stay with them, and Terry decided to take the youngster on a tour of the ranch. His son also accompanied them, and it was well after sunset when they decided to return to the homestead. A few hundred yards ahead, Terry noticed a set of headlights moving along a distant fence line, well within the boundaries of his property. He had seen these lights before, and had assumed that someone had taken a wrong turn off the road to the east, but now, seeing them again, he suspected that these people, whoever they were, were hunting on his land without permission. He decided that he would confront them, and immediately began marching in their direction. But as he picked up the pace, the lights began to move away from him. His brisk walk turned into a jog, and as the boys followed suit, he began to wonder why there was no engine sound. They had gotten to within a hundred yards, when the lights suddenly lifted off the ground and floated up over some distant treetops. Terry and the boys stopped dead in their tracks, shocked by what they were seeing. The lights silently continued on their course before disappearing out of sight. 
During the autumn, these lights became a frequent occurrence, especially as Terry began transporting his prized Simmental and Angus cattle onto the ranch. The activity seemed to escalate with the arrival of his high-end livestock, and this is when things started to turn serious. As the winter months rolled in, severe snowstorms battered the region, and Terry found himself out at all hours, rounding up cattle that had wandered too far astray. One late evening, he was out on horseback, searching for one of his prize Angus cows that had been missing for almost 24 hours. He had covered the whole ranch, except for a dense area of woodland to the southwest, which he was now heading towards. As he approached the large outcropping of trees, he was relieved to see the unmistakable impressions of hoof prints in the deep snow, and he now knew that it was only a matter of time before he located the animal. He paused briefly as he considered the tracks. From the spacing, he determined that she had been running at full tilt as she had entered the tree line. This was odd behaviour for a cow, especially during a snowstorm, unless she had been running from something. But what? Although it was unlikely for a predator to be hunting during this weather, it wasn't impossible, but he could see only one set of tracks. He followed the hoof prints for 20 yards into the trees, and soon reached a wide clearing. The tracks continued out into the middle of the open space, and then stopped dead. The cow was nowhere to be seen. A cold chill ran down his spine as he recalled how the wolf's tracks had stopped in a similar fashion, as if the animal had disappeared, or had been sucked up into the air. He searched for a while longer, but began to lose hope. In the end, he turned back towards the homestead with a heavy heart. The only thing Terry loved more than his cattle was his family, and to lose a single cow or bull was not only financially devastating, it was also heartbreaking. He had a profound sense of pride in the breeding and rearing of each of his animals. Over the course of the winter, four more of his prized cows and bulls would disappear in a similar fashion. Terry began to spend many nights outdoors, sticking to the shadows and creeping around his property like a spectre, trying to get the drop on who was taking his cattle. Unfortunately for him, whoever or whatever it was, always seemed to be two steps ahead. The lights seen on his land were now commonplace, but he could only ever view them from a distance, never up close. No matter how silently he tried to creep towards them, they would simply move away as if they knew he was there. But then, in the early hours of one morning, after yet another fruitless night, he was making his way back towards the homestead, when a movement in the periphery of his vision suddenly caught his attention. To his utter shock, he saw a black mass hovering over the ground about a hundred yards to his left, silhouetted against the pale white snow. Immediately he hunkered down, and quietly observed the strange object as it moved across the land. To his eyes, it looked like a slightly smaller, snub-nosed version of the F-117 Nighthawk. However, he knew that it couldn't have been an F-117, because this thing was completely quiet, floating about 20 feet off the ground as if defying gravity. Coloured light shone from its hull, flitting over the snow as if it was searching for something. Terry was able to observe it for around 15 minutes, as it made its way over to the west, before turning back and heading east again. Sitting still in the cold, Terry's arms were beginning to go numb, and as he stretched his limbs, his joints cracked. In the deathly silence, the sounds- How did you know his limbs cracked? That, we, we stopped there. How, did a writer for Huckleberry and Finn write this? Who giving you this intel? Who told you that? I'm turned off now. Somebody sent me the real deal. I like to see the real, you know, like on the history channel, but sometimes you you don't see the right one. You know the ones that got like the real accounts and like real video footage at night, and I want to see one of those. I can't find them nowhere. Every time I click on it, it's some filler bullshit. I can't. Because where is he getting this from? His... seemed impossibly loud, but in reality, it was so insignificant that it wouldn't have been heard by anyone standing beyond a distance of six feet. Nevertheless, the lights on the strange craft suddenly went out. It then stopped and turned in his direction. For a few tense moments, Terry's heart thumped in his chest as the object seemed to glare at him. 
but to his relief, it turned and silently floated off to the north out of sight. In the new year, as the spring rains began to lash the ranch, the family would lose even more cattle, but now they began to reappear, sometimes dead from no apparent cause, other times extensively mutilated. The nature of these mutilations wrap it up here let me know if y'all want part two that's it for this video don't forget to like the video if you like the video comment share subscribe turn on post notifications dm me the link via x formerly known as twitter let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about follow me on twitch pick and rumble before we start rumbling i kick your ass and you end up twitching how he was when he seen his cattle getting nibbled on by that wolf I'll see you on the next video, man. I'm out.